Welcome to my fifth Skyrim mod tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm actually going to go over some of the topics that I get asked most about. Um, some things we're going to cover is how to have a courier deliver a note to the player, how to actually start a quest and continue a quest based on uh, when the player reads a note, and then finally how to set up objective markers so that a compass marker appears over an item that is related to your quest. So in today's quest, we're actually going to have a little courier who's going to run up and deliver a note, and we'll have some directions. So let's see what happens. I need a Ulfric storm cloak. I've been looking for you. Got something I'm supposed to deliver. Your hands only. Let's see here. A letter. Not sure who from. He wouldn't say, just that he was a friend of yours. Looks like that's it. Got to go. Okay, so I started Balin's request. It looks like I got a note, and the objective says read Balin's note, so I'm going to open it up. My books tab, and there's Balin's note, so I'm going to open it and read it. And it actually says, please meet me at the Bannered Mare, sit at the bar. So it says follow the directions in Balin's note as my next objective. So you notice on my compass, it says oh, I need to I go over here. I spend a lot of time so at the market stall up so I can learn the merchant's trade. The Bannered Mare. I'll go inside. And you'll notice when we actually get inside, there is in. a little marker Just over the stool. The so I'll sit down. Take a seat and get the cold down. And it says completed Balin's request. So obviously Savia, we're not going to. Wake up there. We're not in this quest. We're not actually going to do anything fancy. It's just going to be another way to start a quest by having a courier deliver a note. All right, so let's see how we made this. All right, so for this quest, we actually don't have any actors, so we're not going to worry about creating any of them. So we're going to start by creating just the quest itself. So to do this, go to the character tree and go to the quest subtree. Right-click and select new. And let's give the ID of TQM Quest 05, and we'll call the quest uh, Balin's Request. We'll change the priority to 60 as usual, and then change the type to side quests. We're going to leave everything else by default, so the quest is actually started when the game's enabled, so when the player starts he actually has this quest, but we'll progress it through the stages as certain events happen. So as you notice, we don't have all of our options here for the quest, because we need to save it first. Go ahead and click OK, and then let's open it back up. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is set up the stages. So go to the Quest Stages tab, right-click in here and select New, so for index 0, that'll be our startup stage. So go ahead and check the startup stage box here. Then let's add a new index for quest uh, 10, or stage 10. And this is where the player has received the note from the courier, but hasn't yet read it. Then we'll have a uh, stage at 20. And this is for when the player has read the note, but has not yet followed the directions. And then finally, our final, phase, our final stage is stage 30. And this is where the player has followed the directions and actually gone into the bannered mare and sat down. So let's right click here and add a new log entry so we can check this complete quest box because this is the final stage in our quest. Alright, so the next thing we need to do is actually set up our aliases. Let's go to the quest aliases tab, right click and select new, and set a new reference alias. And let's give the alias name of note. And what we're going to do is just change it to specific reference, but don't actually select a reference here. That's because we're actually going to fill this alias in after the quest is started. Um, the problem with this is we first need to check this optional box. So if this is not uh, set, when the quest starts and it fails to fill this alias, it actually won't continue as the quest. The quest will fail to actually start if it can't fill all the aliases. That is, unless the alias has been marked as optional. And that means we don't have to fill this alias as soon as the quest starts. We can actually fill it in later on in one of our later quest stages. Alright, so the next thing to do is mark this as a quest object. That way the player can't drop it from his inventory because we need him to hold on to the note while he's in this quest. And then finally we're going to check the stores text box. And what this allows us to do is use the alias, um, the object that this alias points to, we can use the title of that object and replace that the title of it inside of our objectives text. We'll see this in a second. Alright, so our note actually has two parts to it. Um, it, it first of all changes the stage to stage 10 after it has been received by the player, and then it also changes the stage to 20 after it has been read. So to handle that we're actually going to add two scripts to it. So over here in the scripts area, click Add. And the first thing we're going to add is when the player acquires the note, we're going to progress the stage to stage uh, to 10. So to do this, we're going to use a built-in script. So just like in AI packages, they have built-in AI packages that could apply to any situation. There's the same thing for scripts. So we're actually going to use a script called default set stage on player acquire. All right, and so what this says is it's going to set the quest stage when the player acquires the item, and that sounds exactly like what we want to do. 
So with that selected, click OK. Now all you have to do is change the properties. So go ahead and select it and select properties. First of all is the MyQST. This is the quest that we want to set. And so our quest is our TQM Quest 05. Next thing is this prereq stage. Leave this at default, and this just says, um, this is a way we can restrain it and say you have to be at this stage before you will progress to this stage, so this way we can limit it and say, oh, the player needs to be at stage 5 before we can move to 10, but we don't need to worry about that. What we do want to worry about is the stage to set, and this is the stage that we want to set our quest to after the player has acquired our note. So with this selected, hit Edit Value, and we're going to change this to 10, because we want to progress to stage 10 after the player acquires the note. All right, go ahead and click OK. Now you may be wondering what exactly this uh, script is doing. If you ever want to look at it, you can just right click and select edit source. And here's the code for it. It's actually not too complicated. If you look in here, it's just responding to this on container changed event, which is what we generally use if we were going to write the script ourselves. And it says if the new container is equal to the game or to the player, and the and then we set the quest here, this QST variable to be the my quest property that we set earlier. It says if QSD equals none, then it will use the owning quest. So we actually didn't have to set this my quest uh, property. It would have just detected that it was the get owning quest of the alias if we didn't set that. Otherwise, it sees it checks if the prereq stage was set to anything, and it also says is the stage done if it was set. If we set a prereq stage, it makes sure that that prereq prereq stage was actually completed in our quest. Finally, it does qst.setStage, which is stage to set, the property that we set earlier. So it actually sets our quest to the uh, next stage, and changes the state to inactive, so that way it won't respond to any on-container changed events later on. So it's actually a pretty simple script. What's important, though, is if you do use these default scripts and you're using them on aliases, you need to make sure they actually extend the reference alias. Um, you can get a lot of issues if you're using a default script and it's not behaving as you think it would, or as you think it should. Um, make sure that it's extending a reference alias, because the scripts that are applied to aliases, they need to extend this reference alias type. Okay, next thing we need to do is add a script that progresses the quest when the uh, node is read. Again, we're going to use another default uh, script, so go ahead and click Add. And this one's called uh, Default uh, On Read Set Quest Stage. Notice there's a not alias one, so if you open that one up, you'd see that it doesn't actually extend reference alias, but we want the alias one, so the normal one that's not labeled not alias. So select default on read sets quest stage, click OK. Again with that selected, click the properties button. Let's set the uh, quest here first, so edit the value. Change it to TQM quest 05. And the stage we want to set, so after he reads the note, we want to set it to stage 20. Alright, and click OK. Again you can edit the source to see what it's doing. It's a really simple script, you see here it's extending reference alias so we can be applied to an alias. And here's our two properties that we just set. And all it responds to is the event on read and just sets my quest stage to my stage. Notice that this one doesn't check for if my quest is set to nothing, and so it won't automatically assume that you mean the get owning quest. We have to set this my quest property if we use this script. Let's so go ahead and close that out, and that should handle everything we need for our note. So go up to here, alias name, hold down shift, press tab twice, and then press enter to save your alias. The next thing we need is an alias that points to the stool in white run or in the bannered mare in white run. So let's go down here to the cell view window. With the world space set to interiors, we need to actually open up the white run bannered mare. So I'm going to type down here white run bannered mare and then double click it and open it up. And it'll take a little while to load. And we're doing this so that we can actually point to it um, when we're setting up our aliases. So I'm going to pan over here and here's the bar. And I'm going to make the player sit at this. There's a stool right here, right next to the bar. I'm going to make the player sit there. So let's go back here to our quest. Let's right click and add a new reference alias. And when the window pops up, we're going to call this alias stool. And we're going to use a specific reference fill type. And this time we're actually going to select a reference. So we're going to say select reference and window window. So we're going to double click the stool and make sure it's selected. So it says wooden bar stool. It sounds right. Click OK. Go up here, hold down shift. Oh, actually, we need to add, sorry, we need to add a script to this so that when the player sits in this uh, stool, it will progress the stage to stage 30 and actually complete the quest. So to do this, we're going to click Add, and we're going to add a new script. Oh, so you notice here, it's not actually extending anything. Type down here in this extends thing, uh, reference alias. Normally, it will show up and actually say it's extending the proper thing, uh, that it's extending reference alias. Anyway, we're going to call this TQM Quest O. 5 stool script and then click OK. Alright, now let's go ahead and edit the source of the script. 
And all we're going to do is respond to the on activate event. So down here we're going to type event on activate. And the on activate event receives an object reference type. Oops, object reference type. Um, and we'll call it AK activator. And then we'll just add our end event tag below it. Okay. Now in here we're going to say if we first want to make sure that the activator was the player. So we'll say if AK activator um, equals game dot get player. And we want to make sure that the quest is currently not at stage. 30 already, so we're going to say get owning quest dot get stage less than 30. Then what we're going to do is um, say get owning quest dot set stage. We're going to set it to stage 30. Now there's one problem. If you actually use this script right now, if the player happened to sit in the bar stool before he even read the note, then you're going to notice that it will actually progress the stage to quest or the quest stage to 30, and then complete the quest. But he never actually received a note or did, did not know what happened. He just completed a quest. So we're going to add one more condition here to the end. We're going to say and get owning quest dot get stage greater than or equal to 20. So this says that the quest stage must be less than 30, and it must be greater than or equal to 20. So that means the player has read the note, but he has not yet gotten to the stool. Okay, so hit Control S to save, and it will compile and check for any errors. So that looks good. We'll go ahead and close that. And that's all the script we actually need for this. So let's go up to here, hold down Shift, press Tab twice, and press Enter. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is actually create our quest objectives. So let's go to the Quest Objectives tab. I'm going to right click and add new. And this first index will be at, we'll put the index to 10 because it corresponds to stage 10 of the quest. And for the text, we're just going to set read, and they're going to do an open bracket, and do alias equal note, and then close bracket. And what this is going to do, this is why we check that stores text box in our note alias. So what's going to happen is actually say read, and then it'll replace this tag here with the item name that the alias, that the note alias points to. So we're actually going to make a note item, like a, a book, and give it a title of Balin's note. And then what will happen is when we assign Balin's note, that item we just made, to this note alias, this text will be replaced. When the objective pops up for the player, it's going to say read Balin's note. Alright, so the next thing we need to do is actually add another uh, objective for stage 20. So this objective is shown as soon as the player has read the note. And it's going to say follow the directions in, then we're going to do again open bracket alias equal note. And that way this will actually turn out to be in the game, follow the directions in Balin's note. Okay, and so that, that's all of our objectives. So go ahead and click OK, close that request, and save your progress. Okay, now that, now that we created our quest, we need to actually make the note that the courier is going to give the player. So to do this, we're going to go to the items tree and go to the book tree. We're going to copy an existing note. So in the filter, I'm just going to type in note to get an idea of some of the notes that we have here. I'm just going to grab one. I'll, say, I'll grab MQ105 note. I'm going to right click and select edit. The first thing I'm going to do is change the ID. I'm going to call this uh, TQM Quest 05 Note. Okay? Now I'm going to give it the name of Balin's Note. Now if you remember, this is the name that's actually going to show up in our quest objectives. So it will replace that, the alias equals note tag, with Balin's Note. So whatever you write here, that will be replaced in there. Finally, I'll give it some text. And the text is going to say, please meet me at the Bannered Mayor. Uh, sit at the bar. Okay? And just click OK. And it's going to do some spell checking. Click ignore, ignore, and then click OK. And it's going to say, would you like to create a new form because we changed the ID of the previous form? Go ahead and click yes. And what it's going to do is it'll duplicate the old note and then give it the new ID that we just made. So basically we made a copy of that. We didn't actually destroy our MQ105 note, but now you'll see if we search in here we'll have a TQM Quest05 note. Okay, and so that's everything we need to do to actually create the note. Okay, so now that we've made our note, the next thing we need to do is actually start scripting the stages of our quest. So open up again TQM Quest 05, go to the Quest Stages tab, and we're going to add some scripts to stage 0. So right click in the log entry area and select New. And what we need to do is actually add a couple of properties to this uh, papyrus fragment. So if you click the button, it may not show up. This is just a glitch in CK. So what I like to do is add a comment to the top. It'll say Start the Quest. And I'm going to click OK and actually close out of the entire quest. And then once it closes, I just open it back up, go to the Quest Stages tab, 
Um, with index stage 0 selected, um, go ahead and click the properties button again, and now you should see the properties window actually open. So we're going to add two properties. Uh, the first property is for the note that we just created, and the other one is for the overall Skyrim courier quest. So the way the courier quests work is there's actually one master courier quest, and if you want if, we're gonna, if you want to take advantage of that master courier quest, if you want the courier that runs around the world of Skyrim to actually approach the player and give him a note or something, um, all you have to do is actually add a an object to this container where the courier takes all of, all the notes out of there and actually gives them to the player. So to do that, we actually need to refer to the master the overall courier quest. So let's first add a property for that. So click the add property button, change the type to quest. And then set the value to WI Courier. So that's that. That's the name of the the master courier quest in Skyrim. Click OK. And we give it that name so that it will auto fill the property. So again, you see that it actually automatically filled it to the WI Courier quest object. So it's perfect. The next thing we need to do is add a property for the note that we just made. So change the type to book because that's the type of object we just made. And we'll call this our uh, we'll just call it note. And click OK. Okay, now we need to fill this one ourselves, so we're going to right with it selected, select the edit value option, and change this to TQM Quest 05 note that we just made earlier. Then click OK. Alright, so the first thing you need to do is if you remember, our note alias wasn't filled to anything. We set it optional and we didn't specify what should fill that alias. So now what we're going to do is actually create an instance of our note that we just created earlier and set it to our note alias. So to do this, um, type down here alias underscore note. Now we're going to use the dot force ref to function, and this makes this this way we're going to fill the note alias to this reference, and the reference is going to be a new instance of that note property that we just set. So we're going to say game dot get player dot place at me, and then we're going to pass a note. All right, so what this does is this internal spot just says get the player and then place at the player a new instance of note. That doesn't mean the note's going to be placed inside of the player's inventory, but instead it'll be placed at his feet. This is only just for a few seconds while the quest actually starts. We're going to immediately um, teleport it away to the courier, so the courier will have it. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do in the next line is uh, WI Courier. So this is the property that we set that refers to the, w, the master courier quest in Skyrim. We're going to cast it, so we're going to use the as WI Courier script. So that's the script that the WI Courier quest has over it. And that script has a function called add alias to container. And we're going to pass it alias underscore note. Alright, and so what this does is it takes our note object that we just filled here, our note alias, and it's going to take that, uh, that note that we just made and actually set it inside of this special container. Then what happens is the choreo will check that container and basically deliver the note to the player for whatever's inside that container. We'll go over this later on. Okay? Um, so there's a couple of issues with this that we're not going to address, but maybe on your own you want to worry about, is with this game.getplayer.placeatme, this places the note at the player's feet. And it actually takes a little while for the script to run this line where it adds alias to container. And so what happens is the note will actually appear on the ground below the player's feet as soon as the game starts. And will just take a second before it actually teleports away into this courier container. So if the player is really quick and immediately looks down at his feet, you'll see this, um, this note laying on the ground. So one way to fix this would be to maybe place this note somewhere else. Um, that's not near the player, so somewhere hidden or something like that, you can decide what you want to do to handle that. But for now, we'll just leave this how it is because it's simple. Next thing we need to do is go to stage 10. So select stage 10. And then again, we need to right click and add a new. We're going to do, all we need to do for these is just uh, show the objectives and set some objectives to be completed. So for stage 10, we're just going to show the 10th objective. So we're going to say set objective, oops, objective uh, displayed and pass it 10. So that starts, that just shows the objective at index 10. And then go to stage 20. Okay, right click and select new in the log entry. In this one we're going to say set objective completed 10. So that says, this is saying that, oh, the player has received the note from the player, or from the courier. That's been completed. And the next thing we need to do is set objective displayed We'll set that to 20. So now this is when he's read the note, and now this objective says you need to follow the directions in the note. All right, and the final thing we need to do is for objective or stage 30. Right-click and add a new, 
Oh, we already have one. Oh, we already have a uh, log entry in here because we want to check that complete quest box. So for this script, we're just going to say set objective completed. I'll we'll set it to 20. So that just says complete objective 20 because they, at this point, they have sat down in the stool, thereby having actually followed the directions that were in the note. Go ahead and click OK. And then save your work. Okay, so at this point you may be wondering how do we actually get the courier to give the player the note. To do this we're actually going to edit the existing WI courier quest that we referred to in our property earlier in our, um, in our stage scripts. So with the quest tree selected, type in the filter WI courier and then open up that quest. Alright, so the way this quest works is if we go to the dialog views tab and then open up this WI courier view. There's this long list of all these lines that the courier actually says to the player. And it's these lines where he actually um, gives the player the item based on some event. So what we're going to do is since we don't have the same voice actor that we have for this courier, we're going to hijack one of these um, lines that he always delivers. Luckily there's one here. Um, there's a, I, I have a a letter, not sure from whom, he wouldn't say, just that he's a friend of yours. So that's a generic enough line where we can actually use that when the courier delivers a letter to the player. So we're going to double click that to open it up. And you notice down here there's this check and it says, get item count, the book of WI cast zero, magic 04 letter is greater than or equal to 1. If we double click that and open it, you notice that it's running on the quest alias container. And so this is an alias that the WI courier quest has that refers to this one container, and that's actually the container that our note was placed into when we scripted the zero stage of our quest. What we need to do is open this up and check this OR box, and then click OK. And what this means is that this he'll say this line so long as he is the courier, so that's, that's, that's normal, and he has um, the item count, so there's at least this magic letter inside the container, or then we're going to add our own thing. We're going to say new, add a new condition here, and we'll say get item count again, just like they did up here. Again, we're going to run it on and change this run on to quest alias, and then change this to container just like I had above. Check the or box as well. And what we're going to say is change is invalid. We're going to set this to our TQM quest 05 note. And then click OK. Okay, so now it reordered things incorrectly. We actually want this and line, this get is alias ref courier at the very top. So with it selected, select this reverse arrow. Okay, now the logic for this line is make sure that the courier is the courier, so it's the reference that the alias courier points to, and that's fine. Then it says deliver this line if he has either he has a, a TQM quest 0105 note, or so notice the or there, or a WI cast magic 04 letter. And so this means if either of these things occur, he'll actually say this line. So we haven't broken the WI quest cast whatever quest this is related to but we've just included ours here. So we basically, what happens is now he'll say this line which has been pre-recorded, it's part of Skyrim, we just hijack this line for our own uses. Okay, and so we can go ahead and click OK and save that. Alternatively, if you did want to record your own line, you could open up this WI Courier Deliveries topic and then right click in here, select new, create your own um, your own line. But of course, unless you can mimic his voice really well, it's probably not going to sound very good because the core is going to show up. He's going to say, let's, he'll sort of say, I've been looking for you, got something uh, I'm supposed to deliver for your eyes only or your hands only. And he'll start saying these lines and all of a sudden it'll be your voice and he'll say some weird line. So just be careful if you want to do that. We're just going to hijack though this one line that's already recorded. All right, so that's all we need to do. Click OK and save your work. Alright, so the last thing we need to do is actually give the player the idea of where he needs to go by adding one of the quest um, markers to his compass and to his screen. So to do that, it's pretty simple. Just open up TQ and Quest 05, go to the Quest Objectives tab, and then with uh, Objective 20 selected, we can add down here this Target Ref. So right click in here and select New, and then right here says Quest Target Data, the Target Alias, and we're going to set this to Stool. And then we'll also check this button that says compass markers ignore locks. So that's if, if they can't actually get to that place, it will hide the compass marker, but we're going to leave this enabled so that it won't it, so that will actually ignore locks. So if the, if the bannered mirror happened to be locked for whatever reason, then the player would still know that he needs to get in there at some point. Okay, and so what this does is we set this target alias to stool. So what happens is it will add a compass marker over that stool object that we selected earlier and show him show the player exactly where he needs to go. So go ahead and click OK. Then save your progress. 
All right, so I'm actually, for this phase, we're not going to do anything, but I'm just going to explain to you how the query request actually works and how um, we kind of figured out what happens with it. Uh, the first thing that, that happens is if we go down here to the SM event node and clear the filter, and then open up the change location event, you'll notice in here, somewhere in here, there is a quest for, um, where is it? Uh, WI, WI courier node shares event quest. And you notice there's a lot of conditions being checked for this. So what happens is, remember again, this event node happens, or this tree is checked every time the player changes location. And so what we're seeing here is in this node, this is the node that actually starts off the WI courier quest. First thing it does is it checks a few flags. It says, are WI events enabled? Make sure that's one. And then make sure that the WI courier item count, which is some global variable, is greater than or equal to one. So there's at least one item waiting to be delivered. And that value is actually incremented every time you make a call to that add alias to container, to courier container call that we made in stage zero of our quest script. Next thing it does is it says, uh, make sure that the location type here, the new location that the player just moved into, is a habitation, so it's actually somewhere habitable. And the next thing it does is make sure that the type is not the orc stronghold. So we don't want the player, the courier, to, that's actually set to zero there. So the courier shouldn't start his quest, shouldn't go find the player if the player is hanging out in the orc stronghold. Um, there's a few other things here. It, it checks for event data and makes sure that we're not in the winter college, uh, winter hold college area. It also says make sure we're not there, make sure we're not in Helgen. We don't want the courier to approach us when we're in Helgen, so in that first scene, we don't want him to approach. You notice here below this this uh, quest node is the actual quest itself that gets kicked off. So that's what leads us to look into the WI courier quest. So if we go back here to the quest subtree and look into WI courier like we just edited earlier, you open it back up, and you can see that there's a script here. There's a WI courier script, and this is the script that we actually called in stage zero in the script for our stage zero of our quest. So if we right-click this like edit source, we can see what's happening. There's actually a lot going on, but here is that function that says add alias to container, and it takes a reference alias and just adds it to the container. So it says here's get the object from the it says rf alias to add get reference stores it in this variable v object reference to add, then calls this add ref to container function. That is right here. And what that does, it says p courier container, which is some property that's set to the container, and it adds a and it adds this item that was passed in, this object, the object ref to add, and then it increments the item count, which is that global variable that that sm event node earlier checked, and that's what tells it, hey, there's some there's some things that are waiting to be delivered by the courier, so start go ahead and start the courier quest, okay? So what is this mysterious p courier container object? Well, if we close that and open up the click the properties button with the W courier script selected, here's the P courier container. And what we're going to do is actually, um, so it says it says right here that it's in the WI courier cell. So let's see what that is. So down here in the interiors world space, let's look for WI courier cell. Double click it to load it. And if we zoom out, I notice there's a few object references. Oops. And then there's a man in here and a barrel. And this is the WI courier container ref. And this is actually the object that is holding all of the courier items that need to be delivered. So what happens actually in our quest is that an item gets placed into this barrel by calling that add alias to um, container function from the WI courier script. It just gets placed in here. And you notice right here is the courier himself, the WI courier NPC ref. So what happens is the game script just teleports the player teleports the courier to the correct place near the player in the world as soon as there's an item in this barrel and then he'll deliver the letter and actually transfer an item from this barrel into the player's inventory after the courier here has actually set his dialogue lines. So it's actually kind of a funny system. In general, it just teleports him back to here. So the courier just hangs out in here until um, something shows up in this barrel and then he knows he needs to deliver it. So it's pretty cool and pretty uh, funny way to handle things, but it works. Okay, so here we see uh, the courier approaching. I've been looking for you. He says Got the line. I'm supposed to deliver. Your hands only. You'll notice that he's going to say the Let's line that we just hijacked. So it says a letter. Not, not sure, sure who from. from. He wouldn't say, just that he was a friend of yours. Looks like that's it. All right, and then we get the item. Then it actually starts Balin's request. The quest, and it says read Balin's note. There's the objective. Notice there's no objective marker on the compass because there's nothing we need to do just yet except for read the note. So we go to the books tab. There's Balin's note. 
open it up, and notice it says read Balin's note, so that alias tag was being replaced in there. And it says follow directions from Balin's note. Again, the alias tag was being replaced. So sit at the bar, we close it. And now we see that objective marker actually appear because we just progressed to stage um, 20 of the quest. So now it says we need to follow the compass. And remember again, we have the alias, the target alias set to be that stool. So we go inside the Bannered Mare. And when it actually loads, we can see in. the stool. There's Let Marks with the little marker. We sit down. It calls it on activate out. script and progresses our stage to 30, which happens Sadia, to be the complete stage in this quest. Alright, so of course in this quest you could add to it. You could make the quest line continue. You could actually meet Balin. So this is a good time for Balin to actually approach the player and sit down like we covered in the first tutorials and who knows what else. So that's how we actually use the courier in Skyrim and how we can actually take advantage of the existing voice work to create our quest. Alright, thank you for watching.